Good evening, everyone. Um, we'll just wait for a couple of more minutes so that everyone else can join, and then we'll start our session. We'll start now. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining this webinar. And good evening, everyone back in India. And good morning to all my colleagues here in the States. My name is Minakshi Tiwari, and I work for Arizona State University. I work for ISSC International Student and Scholar Center. And I am a coordinator for Indian graduate and undergraduate students. Uh, before I start, I just want to welcome all of you to Arizona State University, and I want my colleague and my student worker to introduce themselves. Daniel. Hi, everyone. Um, Manakshi says you stopped video sharing, so I can't share my video. Um, I did? <laughs> I tried to start my video and it says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it, but that's okay. They don't have to see me. Um, um, my my cartoon here looks pretty much like me anyways. <laughs> um, hey everyone, Daniel Hoyle here at the International Students and Scholars Center. Uh, excited to be with you today and we'll be very excited to meet you in person uh, when you come and hopefully to see you at orientation and beyond orientation at many activities and things that we'll host throughout this time together as you're studying at ASU. Uh, looking forward to answering your questions today and hope this session is very helpful for you. Thank you, Daniel. Jitesh. Oh, hi, hi, guys. I'm Jitesh. I'm student worker in Minakshi. I'm Indian student support assistant. Currently, I'm a master student enrolled in information technology. I'm in my third semester right now. So I will be very happy to help you all. Uh, if you have any questions, just shoot it out. Uh, looking forward to see you all in person soon. Thank you. Thank you, Jitesh. Sukrat. Hey everyone, my name is Sukrat. Um, I'm an undergraduate majoring in computer science. Uh, I even I, same as Jitesh when I work at ICC. I work with Minakshi. I look forward to meeting you all and I'm more than happy to help your questions and like answer your questions. So yeah, uh, hope to meet you all soon in person and let me know if you have any questions today. Thank you, uh, Sukrat. And we also have Sharia from Poly Campus. Sharia, please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Shaurya Manglik and I'm the student body president for the Polytechnic campus. So I will be answering some questions. The Q&A is open. So if you have any questions, please put in your questions there. And if you have any poly-related questions, 
um, please don't hesitate to contact me. I will be presenting, so all of my details will be in that presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Sharia. So yes, IESSC is International Student and Scholar Center, as uh, Daniel mentioned briefly that we do a lot of activities for you. And, you know, if it comes to rules, regulations, and, you know, any job related questions, we are there to help you. You have to go through ISSC for all these needs. And if you want to connect with me, this is my email address. And please mention your 10 digits ID whenever you are sending any message to me. Uh, yes, these are the scenarios when you can contact ISSC if you want to change your degree level, change your I-20, you know, um, want to uh, go for, you know, um, social security number, any enrollment issue, anything, all these scenarios when you have to contact ISSC, everything related to these scenarios has to go through ISSC. And besides this rules and regulation, we have so many events for you. I am planning a welcome event for Indian students. It's on August 19, and it will be on Sun Devil Fitness Center, which is our gym in Tampa campus. And I would really recommend you if you want to connect with me and all these wonderful students who, you know, always present with me during this in, uh, orientation. They all will be there, you know, it's a great place to know your resources, to know ISSC, to know me, to know Daniel, to, you know, connect with Jitesh, Shukrat and um, um, Sharia and, you know, all other student clubs, Indian student clubs. So please do come for this welcome event. And we are also planning grocery store visit for you guys, if you want to learn, you know, what are the American grocery store here uh, within Tampa campus and you know other Indian grocery store. So these are the visit uh, which are scheduled on August 12th and 18th. And then we have a couple of other uh, amazing, amazing events for you. I would highly recommend you to join our Learn Arizona series. If you want to know, you know, what are the great places you know, in and around Valley. So this is a series for you. If you love hiking, biking, outdoor activities, please join our Learn Arizona series. I have my own uh, event called Chat and Chat every month. I connect with you guys, you know, bring your questions with me or for any uh, ISSC advisor. We are there to connect with you and solve your problems. And we also have a weekly event called Coffee and Conversation where you can come and learn, you know, any about anything about any American culture. And we also host all these watch, watch parties, networking event, and all these kind of events. So we have tons and tons of programming for you guys. Uh, let's start from the very beginning when you guys are allowed to travel into the United States. As per the rules, you can enter any time uh, a month prior to your classes, but we highly recommend to come at least one week before your classes start. So you just get yourself comfortable and, you know, just get a hang out of the campus and your classes and everything. And also, if you are planning to live on dorms on campus, please be aware that your move in date is August 19. So all moving into dorms will start on this date. And if you are arriving before that, uh, you have to take care of your temporary housing. Um, unfortunately, university does not provide any temporary housing for students. I would suggest you to connect our, uh, to join our WhatsApp group because this, these are the great platforms for all students, you know, um, our current student who have any uh, room availability in their apartment. So they keep sharing all this uh, uh, information in our WhatsApp group and you can get all those, you know, um, housing needs or any other need if you want to know about any classes or any courses, our WhatsApp group are the best platform for that. Uh, just a clarification, it is August yeah. 9th, actually. I think, Minakshi, you said August 19th. Oh, yes, sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Sharia. 
Uh, yes, important documents. These are all your important documents, passport, visa, and all these you can read along. And But I just want to mention one letter, travel letter from ISSC. Uh, if uh, anyone of you can share that in our QA and or in chat for our students. This is a very important letter for all of you. This letter is from ISSC. You might have received it. Uh, I mean, if you are checking your uh, ASU email regularly, you might have received it. If you're not, uh, then we are going to share it in the chat or in QA. For all of you, this letter is very important. It has to be with you when you are coming to immigration and it has our uh, emergency contact number. If you face any problem during your immigration, that number is there, you can call at that number. And if you have any friends or family in, uh, in the States, I would highly recommend to keep their phone number handy. Uh, we also suggest our student to keep a little cash with them, not too much, not too you know low. I would suggest any any anything which is uh, from two hundred or three hundred dollar to five hundred dollar. It's more than enough. If you have any credit debit or any forex card, please keep it with you. Books and stationeries are optional. Neck pillow we recommend because it's a long journey, and you know just want to be just want all of you to be comfortable. Extra pair of clothes, I would suggest to keep some, you know, four, five, six pair of clothes in your handbag because sometimes it happens that airlines last year, you know, loses your bags and you get your bags after like two, three days or one week or sometimes, you know, after a month. So it's always advisable to keep some extra pair in your handbags. Traditional dresses, you will have lots and lots of opportunities to celebrate our festivals, you know, activities here in, in Tampa campus, Poly campus and other campuses as well. So I highly recommend to keep your traditional dresses for all these festive activities. Um, these are your other important documents, admissions except only sealed transcripts from your current uh, institute. So please get a sealed transcripts. Medicine prescription, if I would highly uh, recommend to bring all the general medicines with you for common cough, cold and fever that you are used to of taking. Besides that, if you are used to of um, uh, homeopathy or Ayurvedic medication medicines, uh, these medicines are not available in United States. So please bring enough quantity of those medicines with you. Indian driving license is valid for six months and international driving license is valid for one year here in state. So please bring them with you. And cooking necessities, if you are planning to uh, stay off campus and you know can cook, I would highly recommend to bring some small pressure cooker, karhai or some, you know, um, um, what is it called? stainless steel thali and all those things with you. Prepared food, snacks and spices, anything which is in powdered form, please bring with you uh, powdered form and you know nicely packed. You can bring a jar and pickle as well, but they have to be nicely packed. I do not recommend our students to bring uh, whole dals because you know sometimes at customs they are considered as seeds. Sometimes customs when they open your bags they can throw that away. It completely depends on customer customs at, at that time. But besides that, any powdered form, any spices, if your luggage weight limit allows, please bring them with you. And also I would say, you know, just keep enough um, ready to eat snacks like uh, Maggie or uh, any biscuits, namkeen, whatever you like, please bring them for you. Enough stock for at least two, three weeks. I don't want you to, you know, just come here and, you know, rush to grocery stores. So please keep enough supply for that. Your vaccination 19 uh, COVID record, please keep it with you. And I also wanted to add here that keep all these important documents with you all the time. Do not keep documents, especially in your check-in luggage. Keep them on your uh, carry-on luggage, on your backpack or on your purse, in, inside your purse all the time. And uh, if you are bringing medicines, medicines has to go in your check-in box and your any prescriptions from your doctor, it should be stay with you all the time along with your important documents in your backpack or in your purse or in your carry bag. 
back. Vaccination document, your MMR vaccination is very, very, very important. If you do not upload this record on your MyASU, on your portal, you are not allowed to register for your classes. I repeat, MMR vaccination is the most record that you have to bring with you. If you do not have it, please get it from your doctor. You can get this vaccination here, but it is not covered under your insurance and it's gonna be very expensive. TB vaccination, I recommend because sometimes they can also ask for this one. So it is always advisable and a good idea to keep it with you. COVID vaccination certificate, if you have that card, please bring it along with you. It is required for travel. And then I again, you know, um, suggest to check with your airlines about their current COVID-19 policy. Negative COVID test is not required anymore, but I would highly suggest to keep your uh, vaccination report with you. Uh, port of entry and immigration, a lot of questions about this thing. You know, your port of entry is the place where you arrived in the United States. And this is the place where all the immigration uh, processes will take place. So if you are coming through connecting flights, let's, for example, if you're coming to, you know, any other states, New York uh, or uh, any other states than uh, Arizona, then your first destination, that state will be your port of entry and all immigration will be done there. Uh, you have to keep all these documents along with you. And I also told you to keep your travel letter handy at this time. After they are done with immigration process, they will upload everything on uh, their website and you need this I-94 form is very important for you at this point. Uh, it will be updated on their website. Link is there. Sometimes it takes from 24 hours to uh, you know a week to get this form updated. So please have patience, but you do need this I-94 form in order to do your service check-in which is very, very important for all the international students to do as soon as they arrive in the United States. And Port of Entry and Immigration. Immigration, I would say, you know, it's a it's a regular process. Sometimes it takes like five minutes and sometimes it can take like, you know, half an hour or so. So please do not panic at this point. Stay calm and answer all the questions that you have been asked. And I would highly recommend that don't give them any extra information. Whatever they are asking, just provide them all the information and all the documents at this point. And if they take you, you know, uh, take you aside to ask some more questions, please don't panic. Just stay calm and, you know, help them. Airport pickup. Uh, we have a tie up with Lyft services and we provide a free ride to all our students from um, airport to their destination here in Valley. And you have to register for international student orientation for that. So this is the link, it's already updated. It's already there on our website. Please register for international student orientation in order to get Lyft services. Daniel, you want to take this slide or I, should I continue? Whenever you're ready, I'll, I'll jump in. Okay, thank you so much. So please jump in. All right, everyone. Good to be here with you again. Um, I'm gonna start off by talking about university housing. I know this is probably a big question for a lot of you. Um, so we wanna give out some details here. I will state that we are not the final authority on university housing. That is the housing office, as you see here on the slide, housing at asu.edu. We will share with you the information that we have today um, that has been shared with us. And then again, for any follow-up questions, we advise you to reach out to housing and check your housing portal. But um, so I'm going to start off today with what we have been informed and what we know and what we want to share with all of you. Being honest and transparent, university housing does fill up very quickly at ASU. ASU is a large campus with a great, big, diverse student body. Hopefully you had received communication about applying for housing early. 
By early, I mean about a little over a month ago, May 15th was the priority deadline for applying for housing. Hopefully you're able to get your application in by that date. If not, it, not that you won't get housing, that's not 100%, but it will be much less likely if you do not submit a application by the priority deadline. Please keep in mind that housing at ASU is divided up based on the college that you are studying. So the residence halls that you will be assigned to will be, you know, it'll be applied both by your major, your, your college that you're in, as well as the campus that your major, that your college is assigned to. For example, if you're within the Fulton Schools of Engineering, um, depending on where your major is, you could be on the Tempe campus in a place like Tooker House, for example, or you could be on the Polytechnic campus in one of their residence halls, depending on where your major is located. That is done so that you have a chance to interact with classmates from your college. You go to class together, study together, form study groups, things of that nature, as well as, of course, to make it convenient to your class locations. Because we have multiple campus locations throughout the Phoenix metro area. And so we encourage you to be as close as you can to where you are studying and where you are taking your classes. If you are not assigned housing and you have to live in um, off campus housing, we again encourage you to make sure you understand where your major and where your classes are going to be located and to seek out accommodations closer to where you are going to be living and studying. That will facilitate, again, as I said, getting to classes, interacting with your professors, your classmates, finding on-campus employment, all of those things, shopping, activities. All ASU services are offered at every single campus. And so we encourage you to be involved with and engaged in, in where you're living and, and studying. Now, as Manakshi mentioned earlier, the move-in date for international students is Wednesday, August 9th for on-campus housing. You need to request that by, because you, if you have a housing assignment, you might have received a different date, such as that weekend, the 12th or the 13th, as that is the traditional move-in date for all students. So if you can just email them, housing at asu.edu, remind them that you're an international student and that you need to arrive in time for the international orientation, the international welcome events, um, that will be in your best interest. One last point on this slide, um, temporary housing, unfortunately, is not something that ASU is able to offer at this time. So if you do plan to arrive prior to your move-in date in your residence hall or your off-campus apartment or you know, accommodation, you will be responsible for finding your own temporary housing or hotel, you know, whatever that may be, and, and you'll be responsible for the cost as well. Speaking of those welcome events, Friday, August 11th, 2023 will be our welcome event for all new undergraduate international students. We encourage you, in fact, it's required that you go in and you RSVP for that event. Even if for some reason you can't make it to that event on Friday, August 11th, you still need to RSVP for that event because that is the way that you will be registered to receive your transportation, your lift code from the airport to wherever it is that you are living. If you do not register, you will not be put into the system to receive that transportation, that lift code. So please make sure you go in and you register as soon as possible. You provide your information, your flight information, all of those things. So we have that and we can serve you better. We hope that everyone will be able to arrive in time for that orientation. If you do not make it for whatever reason, you it will be a hold placed on your account to attend a makeup session. So that way we can meet you and share that information with you. But again, we encourage all of you to be there. We'll have lots of activities and information that day, chances to network, all sorts of good things for you. So please, please be there. All right, off-campus housing, there are quite a few options throughout the Phoenix metro area, whether it's happening here during your first year at ASU or beyond. Um, we encourage you to check out the resources that are available to you um, through offcampushousing.asu.edu. 
as well as, again, there's just a good, in, in addition to finding accommodations, there are a lot of other great information there, such as what is a lease? What is that contract? What does it mean? How, what does it mean when you sign it? I, for those of you that have attended past sessions, I apologize, but I want to keep sharing this story because it's valid. I have had students in the past that thought they could sign multiple lease agreements and then they could do a comparison. But once you sign a lease agreement, that is a legal contract. And you have to follow the rules of that contract if you want to get out of it or break that lease, which oftentimes comes with a cost to break that lease to get out of the agreement early. So please talk to your friends, read these websites, become educated on some of these policies about you know, finding accommodations. And once again, know where your class is and your major is. That way you can find the best accommodations most convenient to where you're gonna be spending most of your time living and, and studying. If not, there will be you know, some other minor inconveniences such as travel, transportation, things that will just kind of add to your day that will preclude you from being more fully engaged in the campus activities to where you're going to be. Again, as an example, um, you know, WP Carey, engineering and other schools, they offer majors at multiple campuses, Tempe, Polytechnic, West, you know, so please make sure that you are aware that information is available to you of where your major and your classes will be. That way you can be more fully engaged. You can be on time for classes. You'll be able to better understand the campus facilities for where you're going to eat, hang out, find a job, get involved with campus life, you know, volunteer and leadership opportunities. So just make sure that you are aware of those things and, and are choosing the best location for yourself and join our WhatsApp groups. All right, so that's all of the information there about, about accommodations. Again, please check out those sites, please be in communication. And um, it's important and trust me, it'll be a huge psychological relief if you know where you're going when you arrive to Arizona, that you have a place secured and you're ready to move in. Even if that's a temporary hotel for two nights before you move into your residence hall or your apartment, having that secured takes a big burden off of you. All right, health insurance. Just gonna start off out the gate and say, yes, health insurance is mandatory. It's even a law in the United States that people have to have health insurance. Otherwise, it can have an impact on you if you're a US citizen and you don't have health insurance, it can impact you when it comes to tax season. But for you as international students, yes, it is mandatory that you have health insurance. There is a plan approved by what's called the Arizona Board of Regents, ABOR for short. That is the governing body that oversees the public universities in the state of Arizona, ASU, University of Arizona, Northern Arizona University and they have an approved health insurance plan assigned to the universities, which will be assigned to you as an international student. This insurance starts four weeks before the start of class because that's the earliest you can arrive in the United States, and we wanna make sure you're covered during your travel and during your full time in the USA. The insurance charge is automatically applied to your student account. You will find it on your finance tab when the charges are placed there. The amount between fall and spring is different because the fall semester covers from when you arrive until the end of the year. So this would be December 20, 21st, no, December 31st, that's the proper date, December 31st, 2023. Your spring insurance will then cover from January 1st up until the start of the next fall semester. So it's a longer time period. So the charge in the spring is slightly larger, slightly more expensive than the charge in the fall. but you do have insurance that covers you year round while you're a student at AS. These are some things that we encourage you to get done early, as soon as you can upon your arrival to the United States. CVIS check-in. So as soon as we hit that four week marker, that 30 days prior to you know, when you can arrive in the United States, 
on your priority task in your My ASU, hopefully you're starting to become familiar with My ASU, you will see a task that says complete new student check-in. You will click on that. There will be a drop-down menu, and you will see in that drop-down menu instructions on how to complete your new student check-in. You need to complete this by the first day of classes. You cannot complete it until you have physically arrived in the United States. Why? Because in addition to some of those documents you already have, your passport, visa, I-20, things of that nature, one of the crucial documents you'll need to upload is a copy of your I-94. That is a record of your entry into the United States. Now, they do not give that to you physically. You will have to go and download that from the I-94 website by inputting your information, and it will pull down your entry information. The U.S. government is not always the fastest. Again, just being honest and transparent with you, sometimes it may take a couple of days before they update your I-94 record. So if you come in, say, for example, on August 3rd, and you get to your apartment or hotel and you see that it's not automatically updated, please don't panic. It may take a day or two before they upload and update that information. Your student ID card, your Sun Devil ID card, you can start that process now by uploading a photo onto the Sun Devil ID card website. So that process can begin. Um, right now, you just need to go to their website, read the requirements of what type of photo you need to upload and submit. And that will speed up and facilitate the process of getting your ID card when you arrive to the USA. Again, please keep that with you when you're here in the United States, when you're at ASU. Um, if you do lose that card, it does cost to replace it. I believe it's $25 to replace that card. So avoid that cost. Take care of your Sun Devil ID card. Getting a bank account. Again, I encourage you to look around and compare and talk to some of your seniors, some of your classmates. And we have a few of them here today about what is close to campus and what is good as far as the fees, the transactions, the international transfers, all those things that you might need from a bank account. Some major companies that you may have heard of include Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Again, look through those, figure those out and see what's gonna work best for you. That will also be good for if you do obtain an on-campus job as most on-campus jobs will pay you through what they call direct deposit. So having that account set up will be good to have. We talked about welcome and orientation. Again, we strongly encourage you to be there. A lot of great information, a great way to get your semester started. And then your phone. I'm sure that your parents are gonna to wanna to hear from you and make sure that you made it safely. So we wanna make sure that you take care of your phone so that you can be in communication with your classmates here, um, with the ISSC, with your parents, with all of those things that you can take care of those things while you're here in the United States. Again, some companies, T-Mobile, Mint Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, um, investigate what plan is going to work for you as far as coverage, and of course, most importantly, your budget, as there are different plans and different costs. On-campus jobs. We hope that as many of you as possible will be able to take advantage of working on campus while you were here. In addition to making money, always a positive thing. It's a great chance to continue to build your resume. In case you're thinking about doing a CPT, an internship or an OPT post-graduation in the future, it's a great chance to learn about, you know, work culture in the United States, gain experiences, build references here in the United States. So that way you can continue your, your progress in your employment side of things to be enrolled or sorry, to work, I'll get it right. To work on campus at ASU, you must be enrolled full time as that is your priority, right? You're here on an F1 visa, so your priority is being a student. You must have completed your CVS check-in. We must have approved your CVS check-in if you obtain a job during your first semester. Again, during the during your first year here and, and while you're studying, that can only be on campus employment. During a regular semester, that means while you're enrolled full time, you can work up to 20 hours a week. During the breaks, you could go up to 40 hours a week. This can be at one job or it could be at multiple jobs. You could hold more than one employment position, more than one job on campus. Um, but again, you just cannot exceed those, those hours either during your studies or during, during the breaks.
your social security number. In the USA, here in the United States, the only way and the only reason for which you need to obtain a social security number is through employment. Whether that's an on-campus job, you know, an internship, a CPT, an OPT, whenever you have the need and you find employment, you will then obtain the social security number as that will act as a that will act as a tax identification number for you for when, yes, when you see your paycheck, you will see deductions from it, you will see tax being taken out of it, federal and state tax, sometimes even county and local taxes. Um, but that's what that social security number will act as for you as a tax identification number. So that way when you file your taxes, and we'll cover that at a future date, when you file your taxes every year, um, that is the number by which the IRS will know who you are and help with your tax information and potentially most often the refunds. Um, but yeah, so you do not need though an SSN, you will not be necessary to apply for the job at the time. It's not needed to apply for your driver's license, your bank account, your apartment, things of that nature, your phone contracts. Most of the apartment complexes, banks, you know, apartment complexes in the area are aware of international students and their requirements. And so they ask for different documents in order to help you initiate or establish these contracts. Oh, these are big, and I'll let Ms. Minakshi talk about these. Thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, yes, continue talking about on-campus job. I would highly, highly recommend to attend our resume and cover letter writing se sessions. Um, it's gonna, uh, they're coming next week and I am going to share their link today after this presentation. So please, please, please register for this thing. And you know, I, you can apply for, start applying for on-campus job now, but you cannot start working until your civis check-in is approved by ISSC. Please keep that in mind. And even before you want to apply, I would highly recommend to learn these techniques that what your employer wants on your resume because resume is very different process, you know, than India and, and the, India and the United States is very different and cover letter. What is the importance of cover letter? And, you know, what does your employer want on your resume? So please attend this session and, you know, uh, get more benefit and learn all these techniques and all these things. And I also want to, you know, uh, let you all know that volunteering is a great, great, great opportunity here in the United States. And, you know, um, although it's not paid, but it's a great uh, thing to learn, you know, uh, job culture here to connect with people and also to get references. You know, a lot of undergraduate student who works with me, who volunteer with me, grads and undergrads, I provide them reference, but they have to work with me as a volunteer. Uh, so yes, undergraduate session is on June 28th and graduate is 27th. So please attend and register for this session for these webinars. Uh, I also wanted to uh, talk about the orientation. So please be aware that there will be two orientation. One will be, you know, one you have to attend. This is international student orientation just for you. The second one will be from your academic unit, from your department that you are going, uh, you know, that where your classes and everything will be. So please make a habit to check your my ASU and your ASU email in order to get any communication from your classes. And most, not, I won't say most, but a couple of department here, their orientation, their academic orientation is very, very, very important for you. You have to attend those orientations in order to register for your classes. So please check with your department, when is their orientation? Start looking your my ASU uh, portal and email, my ASU portal, especially for, you know, if you, all the tasks that you have to complete before you register for your classes, if there is an, any hold on your my ASU so that you can start working on all those things. 
Academic advisor would be a new term for all of you because we are not familiar with this term in India. They are a very important people who will be guiding you for your you know, course plan, career plans, anything related. They can help you, you know, throughout your degree um, programs. They can help you with your select courses and help them towards your goal of your degree. So you, I would highly recommend to connect with your academic advisor as soon as possible and maintain a very professional relationship with your advisor. Uh, this may happen that if your visa can get refused and uh, you can get, you know, a visa very late. So in those scenarios, we recommend our students to uh, go for a course deferral to next semester. So if you fall into these scenarios, please make sure that you are emailing to these addresses. Uh, when you arrive here, I guess first vacation would be winter vacation. So if you are traveling during those vacation, if you want to travel within the United States, you have to keep all these documents with you. But if you are planning to go out of United States or you know, you're planning to travel to India, just please, please, please take travel signature from ISSC on time. Without travel signature, you cannot enter into the United States. So please, if you're planning to visit India or any other country outside the States, take the travel signature from ISSC. And this is a uh, common scams. It's very common here um, in, you know, not just ASU with every university here in the United States because international students are new and so they can easily fall for these scams. I always advise all my students, everyone, you know, if someone is calling you over phone and asking for money, mm -hmm. it is a scam. No US government agency, no federal agency, ASU, immigration, custom, or all these big agency, no one calls you on phone. So please, if someone is calling you on phone and asking you for money, you know, you have not filled this form, you haven't done this, this much is, you have to pay this much money and all these things are scams. Please be aware of this thing. We have our own website that talks about scams and we are updating uh, our website on scams also. But these are the good resources. I would highly recommend to read all this, uh, um, all this information about scams. Uh, something that I want all my students to be aware of, you know, we have this, this image of uh, United States that, you know, uh, we can do anything here. But please, please, please be aware there are rules and regulation that you guys have to follow. And because you all are international students, you all come under federal laws. So you have to be extra careful when you are here. And, you know, uh, just want to mention what is open container law. It's, you know, even if you have an alcohol container, which is open, even if you are standing outside a bar, it is against the law. If you have open container when you are driving, doesn't matter in your front seat or in back seat of your vehicle, it is against law. Please know all these rules and regulation. You all are international student. It's a new country, new rules, new laws. And you know, you know it's your responsibility and your uh, uh, duty to know all these rules and regulation and about laws. Movie download, you cannot download any movie without any authority. If you do that, you would get a summon from court. Driving under influence, I just don't want to go that side. It's a huge, huge, huge crime. I don't want any student to fall into this category. Marijuana, although it's legal in Arizona, but you know, uh, because you all are, as already I, I already mentioned that you all are international student, you have to be abide by the federal laws and federal laws prohibits its possession and its consumption. Again, we all want all our students to be safe and you know, um, enjoy the campus, enjoy campus life and do not go you know, fall on these categories. So please be aware of these things. And um, this is done from ISSC side. I also just wanted to uh, give you a heads up. 
about this. Uh, we have this resume and cover letter writing workshop that's coming next week. And uh, we have just more one session for you guys. And I will try to bring, uh, you know, um, all the student organizations for you that, and also wanted to touch a little bit about, you know, academic integrity and plagiarism in my July uh, webinars. So I will just hand it over to Sharia and he is our student ambassador from Polytechnic Campus. Any query about Poly Campus housing or anything, he is a great resource. So Sharia, you are up now. Thank you so much, Manakshi, ma'am. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to ASU. That's the first thing I really want to say to you all. Um, I just wanted to tell you all that I'm really happy that you all applied to ASU and you're all coming here in the fall semester. Uh, I am the student body president for the Polytechnic campus, so anything related to the Polytechnic campus um, is overlooked by me. Um, I also advocate for students who are international because um, I am also part of the Council of Presidents, which is the presidents of the four different campuses of ASU, which is Tempe, Downtown Phoenix, Polytechnic, and West, and also the graduate student body, which is GPSA. So I will give you a short, uh, actually not short, but I'll give you a brief about what uh, we do and how you can make use of the resources that we provide to your benefit. So I will share my screen right now. Um, yeah. I hope you all get some new knowledge and new things from my presentation if you have any questions you can put it in the q a and i'll make sure i answer all of that so yeah so welcome to see you starting now so as i said i present uh, the undergraduate student government which is usg and um, we also have gpsa which is the graduate student body so USG and GPSA, which is undergrad and grad, both combine together to form ASASU, Associated Students of Arizona State University. This is an organization that advocates for students and it is made by students. It consists of students. So basically students for students. That's our motto. So anything that you have, um, any queries and questions, uh, any concerns, you can come to us and we can solve all those questions. Um, I will explain what this actually means and what ASCSU is. So ASCSU consists of four, five different bodies. Number one is GPSA, graduate student body. Um, actually, graduate student government. Um, they actually advocate for students who are graduate, PhD level, and all of the other things under except the undergraduate students. Uh, then we have the four campuses of um, ASU and all of them have a separate branch for the undergraduate student government, which is USG. We have Tempe, Downtown, West, and Polytechnic, and all of them have different um, USGs, namely uh, USGT, which is USG Tempe, USGP, which is USG Poly. I'll cover um, this in detail further. So I will touch upon what USG exactly is, because I assume a lot of you are undergraduate students, so you would be interested in what you can benefit from us and how you can make sure that the resources that we provide are used by you. So what is USG? USG is basically students representing students and we advocate for you. And it's not like we are elected, like we are selected by the faculty or anything. You are the ones who vote for us and uh, your vote makes sure that uh, we are elected and we uh, represent you and your voice to uh, different levels of um, authority, starting from university level, to national level and international level. So we can actually do things that are very diverse and uh, of different scales. So make sure that if you have anything, you can just come to us and don't be afraid of asking silly questions. Uh, we love this. The next thing, what do we provide? We provide a number of student run services and advocate for student initiatives, including student wellness, campus safety, and community outreach. Uh, civic engagement and uh, ASP pride and traditions is also something that we are really uh, focused upon. I will tell you simply what this all means. It means that we provide you a lot of free resources and we advocate for all of you to, to higher authorities. 
and you also host events and give you funding so yeah we are kind of something an organization that overlooks everything um so usg distributes funding uh, to student clubs and organizations across asu and it was this concerns and interests at the university local state national levels um and you can experience um like a lot of different things that we do when you come to asd so looking forward to that the next thing what is usgp so usgp is the undergraduate student government polytechnic it's basically an organization um which is based on the polytechnic campus and works for the benefit of the polytechnic campus students um we do a lot of things some of the things i mentioned here i will go through it really quickly we plan and host a lot of major events on the campus so if you have um seen a, a website called sun devil sing which i will uh, cover further um uh, we have a lot of events going on at asu at all time so we can act, we actually host a lot of those events i will go through this in detail in the next two slides we provide appropriations funding for clubs and organizations so if you start a club or if you are a part of club uh, a club or an organization we are the ones who will provide you funding for that so come to us if you have any questions about how to start a club how to be a part of a club and we are also hiring so if you want to be a part of usg we are also inviting you to do that uh the next thing is we provide free health and wellness items which is hygiene products in the wellness carts across the campus so what this means is basically we provide toothbrushes toothpaste um shampoos conditioners uh we provide uh, a lot of different things on campus completely for free and it's just kept there you can just go and grab it and use it so yeah make use of that because it's, we spend a lot of money on that and it's just for you the next thing professional development funding for interview clothing professional exams and application fees for example if you have an interview and you don't have the proper clothes for that you don't have a blazer you don't have a suit you can come to us and we'll give you um funding for that or we can actually provide you clothing that's something that we're really working on so yeah make use of that and we provide funding for application fees or certain things and professional exams like gmat uh and a lot of different things so if you uh think you are in an in a financial crisis and you can't pay for these exams or applications you can come to us and we will help you pay for it the next thing is free printing for all undergrad students in the usg office so we provide free printing which is black and white and color and scanning services in the usg office in every single campus so you uh, you come to us and we can you can actually print it yourself so yeah it's kind of very accessible the next thing is make uh we make all kind of changes and improvements around campus so that means that if you think that there's less lighting in some areas you can come to us we can increase the lighting if there's less um chairs in some area we can increase the number of chairs if you think there is something that you you want us to change academically we can also do that so give us your inputs and we will make sure we do that the next thing improve student life and experience in several ways so basically this is something that i've written very uh, in very short and it covers a lot of different things we provide a lot of resources for free um but generally for right now all you want all you have to know is that you can come to us and we will solve your queries no matter what it is regarding the next thing is free tampons and pads uh, pads across um, 13 locations on campus so for the polytechnic campus specifically we have started an initiative that we provide free tampons and pads uh in a lot of different um i think high populated areas uh this means that if you need any at uh, any time anywhere you can just go there and grab it and it's completely for free so make sure you use that because um i know that some um uh, cases you really don't have time to go and buy one so yeah it's just there use it the next thing is lift codes for free rides this is something uh, specific to the polytechnic campus again uh lift is an app like uber which is in uh, us and uh, we provide free lift codes to uh, students uh making sure that they fulfill a certain criteria and their rides are like not too expensive you can't go to la uh, on a lift ride given by us so yeah we have some parameters but um, yeah take use of that 
um more info about that will be provided if you come to the usd office on the polytechnic campus because this is something which is specific to that i won't elaborate here because i know a lot of you are from tempe the next thing important links so this slide is actually very important i'm going to share it to, to um, all of the whatsapp groups and i think it also will be mailed to you but if you want you can actually Actually, take a screenshot right now and uh, scan all the your QR codes that I put on there because each of these QR codes um, actually is a very important website, and the ones on top are, are Instagram links for um, all the USG and GPSA branches of ASU. But the four QR codes on the bottom are very important. The first one is the ASU job portal. So if you're looking to uh, looking for on-campus jobs in ASU. This is the website you go to and then you search for the job that you like and you apply there. This is very important because we highly recommend each and every student to apply for jobs, uh, no matter what campus you belong to. The next thing is Sun Devil Sync. This is very important. Uh, actually, all four of them are very important, so I will stop saying that again and again. So Sun Devil Sync is, some, uh, is a website that has all the clubs and organizations in ASU listed. And you can join any club and organization there. Um, you can apply to be a part of it and uh, they can reply to you and you will see a lot of info about them as well. You can also see every single event that happens on the um, campus here. So for example, if you want to see what event is happening on um, 26th of August, you can go to Sun Devil Singh and you can see the calendar and you can see what events are happening on which campus by what organization. So very important website. And if you attend any um, event on the ASU campus, you will require a QR code, which is embedded in your Sun Devil Sync account. So sign in there and just make sure that you have a screenshot of that. It's called, um, I forgot what it's called. I'll share with it uh, with you as soon as I remember that in the chat. But yeah, the next thing is Polytechnic Housing. Uh, polytechnic housing is specific to the polytechnic students or people who have classes on the polytechnic campus. But um, generally what I want to tell you all is that living on campus is very good because you will save a lot of time in traveling. And that is very helpful because you can do an on-campus job at that point or you can do assignments in that time. So living, living on campus I know is uh, a little bit more expensive than living off campus because uh, the apartments off campus are a little bit cheaper, I assume. But uh, on campus housing has its own advantage. You will get an experience of what college life is in the United States, and that's very important. Uh, and it's not all just parties and everything, it's a lot. You have a lot of events going on, you make friends, you make connections, you make uh, a very big network that will be very useful to you in your future life. So apply for housing. The Polytechnic Housing uh, link is here. We have a lot of different options for undergrads as well as grads. Uh, so if you're a graduate student and you're looking for housing near the Polytechnic campus, I think our campus is one of the only campuses that has specific housing for the graduate students. So definitely look for that on this link. The next link is the student government link. So that is a link that uh, takes you to the website of ASASU, where you can find all the resources that every single USG or GPSA provides and how you can make sure that you use that to the fullest. And uh, yeah, that's the important links. I will share this on the WhatsApp group and, the, and your emails. Uh, I think Manakshi ma'am will send it to you on your email uh, along with the ISSC um, PDF for the presentation. But I will move on because this is taking too much time. Yeah, our offices. So if you want to reach us, you can directly come to our offices. We have offices on all four campuses. Um, USGs have these four offices, Tempe, Polytechnic, Downtown, and West, the four smaller icons. The locations are there. And we also have our own websites. So if you want to see what all we do or how you can make sure that you take advantage of the USG of your campus, go on to the website of your campus. USG or GPSA and uh, see all the resources that we provide and the funding options that we have available. So, yeah. Um, the next slide is about me. So who am I? I am the president for the Polytechnic campus, specifically the Polytechnic student body. 
um, and I have involvement with other clubs and organizations like Loop Link, which is a very interesting club. Make sure you check that on Sun Devil Sync. Uh, Nerd Herd, it, uh, it is an IT club. Um, it relates to coding and a lot of that stuff. Then Hindu Yuva, um, it's an Indian club which hosts a lot of uh, Indian events. And these are all my contact information. So if you want, you can connect with me on all these different platforms. I will be in my office in the address given there from August 6th. Um, and I will also be a part of the E2 camps if you all are attending those. I will be a C2. So happy to see you all there. So yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted to share with you. This presentation will be shared with you on all the different platforms. Thank you all. Thank you so much. I will hand it back to you now. Thank you so much, Sharia, for all this valuable information. And thanks everyone for attending this session. I hope you all had a lot of information. We'll keep you updating. If there is any update from any department or anything, please keep an eye on your ASU emails and keep checking your uh, portal, my ASU and ASU emails. And I will be sharing a couple of important links soon with all of you. So please um, keep checking your uh, emails and thank you so much. And we are super excited to have you and we will be waiting for you in August. So have a good night, all of you back in India. And thank you so much everyone who are here in the States which, with me, thank you. Thank you everyone.